Hello, Schaefer Minnick here, high performance coach for women. And today I am here to talk to you about four reasons why humility is just bullshit. And um, if you're anything like me, you love the Kendrick Lamar song, Be Humble. Now sit down, you know, and that'll be the end of my singing for this video. More to come later. But I had the real honor this week of being on a virtual panel with a literal badass rocket scientist, Dr. Anita Sengupta, who has worked for NASA and worked for um, the Virgin Hyperloop One and is now working for this really cool company called ASX and is, is spent her entire life literally studying how rockets work in space. And um, it really inspired me after her talk and hearing about being a female in such a male dominated industry and the amount of mansplaining that is still um that that she still has on a day-to-day -day basis really inspired me to take a step back and think about people that are in touch with their feminine energy and this is something that I also feel like I'm very in touch with my feminine energy. A big part of the reason that I work with females only and coach females only. And um, it really made me take a pause and think about why are people that are in touch with their feminine energy, why are women primarily forced to be humble? And why is humility the first thing that we push them to? And... Um, I really felt compelled to sit back and do some research about why taking that power back, about why living a full out big life and not allowing anyone, a man, a woman, a situation, a boss, a job, a balance in your bank account to to force you to be humble because the world doesn't have time for you to live humbly. And if you're not going to promote yourself, ain't nobody else going to do it. So today we're going to talk about four reasons why humility is bullshit and we're going to live full out confidently from here. So let's rock and roll. The first one is you literally have less fear and less anxiety when you live a confident life. And the reason for this is introducing this concept of rumination. And so rumination is something that I have really struggled with. It's the constant replaying of what could go wrong, past mistakes that did go wrong, times where things didn't work out the way you thought they were going to work out or the expectations not meeting reality and things like that. When you replay those mistakes, it literally creates a chemical reaction in your body that triggers your body to feel anxious. It causes your sympathetic nervous system to actually rev up. And so when that happens and you're like, oh shit, I'm gonna wreck on my bike. Oh crap, I'm going to bomb this presentation. Oh my God, I'm gonna forget to bring my computer home. Whatever it is that you're worried about, it actually causes your body to go into fight or flight mode. And so you're no longer living like an all out, I'm a boss ass bitch, I can get this shit done. You're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And it's literally the, the physical manifestation of like looking like an exclamation point versus looking like a question mark. Okay, so live, stand, breathe, full out, and you will literally see less fear and less anxiety in all aspects of your life. The next component is that you become more resilient. You become more affirmed and, and ready to um, make some mistakes. And believe it or not, um, it might seem a little counterintuitive that if you are, are living less um, humbly, that you're like, oh crap, make mistakes. Like people that are confident, like they don't make mistakes, but the truth is they really do. Like if you know me and if you followed me for any amount of time, you know that I stand Serena Williams so hard. One of the things that was so groundbreaking around about the way that Serena and Venus played tennis is that they didn't play humbly. They played very aggressive, what was termed as power tennis, which just the name power is one of those things that's a very masculine, energetic concept to, to be power, to be, to, to be powerful, to have strength and all those types of things. It was really part of the reason that Serena and Venus were, um, and Serena especially had a lot of comments about her physique and how she looked really manly and all these types of things because they would literally, if you know anything about the game of tennis, it's taught that you want to minimize the number of unforced errors that you have. And so unforced errors are times where you have, you're taking a shot and nothing your opponent has done has caused you to, to make a mistake or to make an error. 
Serena is known in her game for having a really, really high percentage of unforced errors to winners. And winners are shots that come back unanswered from your opponent. And that's because she's literally shooting her shot. Like, there's no better definition of it. She's playing full out, like crazy, aggressive, going for the baselines, shots that she thinks her opponents are not going to get back to her. And that's because she lives confidently. She has belief in her game and what she's bringing to the table. And she's not going to let anybody back her down from that and that's why she's the greatest female athlete if not the greatest athlete of all time period the next thing is improved relationships and a lot of times people are like people confuse confidence with cocky and it's not the same thing right um when you're confident and and this is something that i really struggled with for a long time i would walk into a room and i would be like oh my god is my shirt okay am i okay like do i look fat uh do i have something in my teeth like or what are people saying about me? Are they talking about me? I know they're talking about me. And so I'm so in my head, I cannot possibly connect with anyone else. I can't possibly have a genuine relationship. I can't possibly tell people about what an amazing coach I am and how I can help them fulfill their dreams and live a more fulfilled life. I can't possibly tell these women how they can unlock the impact that they're ready to have on the world because I'm so busy worried about me. And the truth is, ain't nobody worried about me, right? So the more that you're able to show up and be confident, the more that you're able to own that, and the more that you're able to have real um, connections and you're, you're able to have um, uh, deeper, more fulfilling relationships. And the last thing is people that possess more confidence and less humility generate more motivation. And who of us doesn't want to be more motivated? Like, hi, me, all day, all the time. And a big part of that is you're able to overcome setbacks, right? Like one of the things that is a big thing that I'm proud of, a big accomplishment I'm proud of in my life is at my heaviest, I weighed 308 pounds, okay? And it took day after day, it took doing the little things right over and over again. It took being okay with myself for the time that I ate a piece of bread or had some ice cream or drank a drink um, had a glass of wine. It took being okay with myself and not beating myself up for that because that's part of life. But I was doing the little things right over and over again. I was eating a balanced diet. I was getting movement in every day. I was being kind to myself and taking care of my uh, mental and spiritual well-being in addition to the physical manifestation. And it, And then that weight loss came and then I became accepting and proud of my body. And so it's it's about doing those little things right over and over again. Success is not going to be born is not going to be built in a day. You're going to have to stay plugged into it. But so once you show up with that confidence and know that it's okay, um, that you're on a journey, it's it's so much more. Um, you, you're you're going to find that fulfillment. You're going to find the inner strength to maintain integrity and perseverance during those setbacks. So four reasons why I don't, your neighbor doesn't, your partner, your family, your significant other, your colleagues, none of us need you to be humble. Fuck being humble, live full out, be a bad bitch. It's your time, it's 2020, let's get clear on our vision. Again, I'm Schaefer Minnick. I can't wait to see you in the next episode and stay well, stay blessed.